It seems that the character consistency problem has been solved by Google's Nano Banana. But do you get what you want every time you use this tool? Probably not. So I'm going to show you prompting tricks and four completely free tools from Google that will help you improve character consistency. And also, I'm going to show you how to animate your characters for free with VO 3.1. The first thing you need is starting image. It can be photo of yourself, for example, or you can generate it. I created this one in Rev. I use this free tool because I like the grade of realism of the face close-ups that I generated here. Image shouldn't be too dark or overexposed. Image quality is not very important, to be honest. If you have several reference images with face close-ups from different angles and full body shot, it will be great. The easiest and most common way to use Nano Banana is Gemini. I'm going to create some photorealistic portrait of this girl. She will sit on the beige couch in the tidy room illuminated by the evening sunlight. She should smile and fix her hair with her hand. I got not bad result from the first try. But for example, if the person is too far or closer to the camera than it should be, or there's wrong camera angle on the generated image, this is not always your fault and something wrong with your prompt. Just use redo button and you'll get new variation. That can be much better than the previous one. I think that face on the second image is more similar to the reference. And look at this. I'll change my prompt by replacing the room with the medieval palace with windows made of stained glass. Here's the image I got. Everything is good, but she has some kind of blank stare. And let's say I want to edit this image by changing camera angle while keeping everything else the same. So now this is higher angle shot. Face and all the other elements look almost unchanged. But if I'll continue editing process, the result won't be so good all the time. I'm going to slightly change the pose and make the face relaxed. And you can see that the face is already a little bit different if we compare it to the reference. Situation will get worse with each new step of editing. I made side view shot and as you can see, this girl became even less similar to the original image. Some facial details still resemble the face from the reference, but I cannot say that this is 100% the same person. This consistency degradation problem appeared because Nano Banana used the last generated image as reference for creating new edited versions each time, but not the image I uploaded. So if you want to keep the face as consistent as possible, even making multiple edits, you should refer in your prompt to the image you uploaded. So I just typed, keep the face of this girl similar to the uploaded image, but make her stand still amidst this room. Okay, the generated image is not full body shot as I requested, but you can see that the face looks good. I can make lots of edits using the same prompting technique. Oops, I forgot to mention that this should be close up. And just look at this. The face on this picture is probably even more similar to the reference than two previous results. I think this is because of the similar outdoor lighting on the reference and the generated image. If you want to use prompting trick I mentioned, you shouldn't use exactly the same words. You can specify that this is person with the face from the uploaded image, and this will work too. And if you want to place the character into completely different scenes, you can upload the reference image for each request in the same chat. But if there will be dozens of generations in one chat, you will wait for your image to be generated two or three times longer because Gemini tries to gather context from your previous requests. I always create new chat if I want to create something new. If I don't like the result I got, I just change my prompt so the new image will replace previous generation. And I start editing some image only if it's really good, but there's some small detail that should be fixed to make it perfect. In general, faces look better if they are close enough to the camera. The same thing with face consistency, because face on the distance become less clear, more noisy, and it can look more random. The next tool is Mixboard, new experimental tool from Google. Its main focus is brainstorming and prototyping some ideas. If you're not from the United States, you'll need VPN to access it. After signing in, you should create new project, and you'll see blank canvas. I'll add image of my character first, and I'll type, show this girl with different hairstyles, and Mixboard created three images using Nano Banana. All the images have the same size, they're just scaled differently. You can resize them, group and place them on the canvas as you want. Generated images are not watermarked in Mixboard. It always tries to add variety to the output. And currently, Mixboard will make three images in one generation if you ask it to create different ideas. For example, I asked it to create ideas of cute makeup with glitter. It's hard to see any glitter on the picture in the middle. Probably Nano Banana decided that this girl is already cute enough because two other images don't have significant makeup changes. It just added glitter. Okay, let's get some ideas of yellow summer dress. Looks very nice, and the face very consistent in all three cases. There are a few additional options, but they're useless in this case. Regenerate option will create image of some random person. Variations button doesn't work with images of people. And the background removal option works not so good as in some other free tools. You can also add images of any other objects. For example, I added 
provided this strapless dress, pink sneakers, and orange sunglasses. I selected all these pictures, and I specified that I want to get images of this girl wearing these items. It created only one image, and you can see that the glasses are different from the reference image. I made another attempt, and the result is the same. The dress and sneakers are consistent, but the glasses are different. I found the way how to fix this. But first, let's check official Google's Nano Banana Image Generation Guide. The developers say that the model works best with up to three images as an input. I added all three items to the single image and uploaded it to Mixboard. I repeated my request and voila. The dress, sneakers, and the glasses look exactly like on the reference image. There are much more use cases for this tool, but this time I just wanted to show you basic features and advantages of Mixboard. The next tool is Whisk. Google updated it and added Nano Banana. So now there are more options for creating consistent characters here. There are different reference options. I added the same image I used before to the subject section. Whisk is different from Gemini and Mixboard. I'm going to create some close-up portraits of this girl sitting on the beach. This dice will create some random prompt if you don't have ideas. You can select aspect ratio here. Sometimes I saw 2x3 and 3x2 aspect ratio options in this section. Probably they will be added in the future. If you want to keep the person on the generated images consistent, precise reference options should be enabled. And if you want to get similar images in different generations, you can lock seed value. In Whisk, you get two images in one generation, and you can create up to three concurrent requests. So this time I'll create three generations but with different aspect ratios. Here's the result. You can see that the face is consistent enough on each generated image. I can add the same items I added in Mixboard. Such reference images should be uploaded to the subject section too. This is it. And there are also scene and style sections. I added this image of the coast of the sea with some rocks. I'll mention all the clothing items in my prompt and I'll specify that the girl should stand on the rock looking at the sea. It's not necessary to mention in the prompt all the items from the reference images, but if you want to be sure that everything will look exactly as you want, it's better to describe how the clothing fit or sizes of the objects the person is holding in their hands. Everything is okay, but the scene doesn't look really similar to the reference for some reason. So I'll deselect reference of the clothing items and remove them from the prompt. This time background is much more similar to the image I uploaded. Honestly, I don't know why Whisk forgot about scene reference in two previous generations. But you maybe noticed that the images generated in Whisk have different vibe if we compare them to the images created in Gemini. Face of this girl looks consistent enough in both cases, but it looks kind of more cute all the time on the pictures by Gemini. And I don't understand why this thing appeared, but there's some piercing on some images by Whisk. I didn't see such artifacts when I used reference images of some other faces, so this problem doesn't appear constantly. Okay, let's get back to Whisk. Each reference image uploaded by you can be edited with Nano Banana. Here's auto-generated description of the uploaded image. And here you can describe what you want to change. For example, I can make the glasses blue, but everything else should be unchanged. For some reason, the aspect ratio you selected in image generation section also defines aspect ratio of the edited versions here. But this doesn't make the objects on the reference image less recognizable or something like that. You can edit character reference images. You can change some details of the appearance of the person. For example, you can change the color of the hair and it will affect the generated images. But if you'll make the person eat an ice cream, for example, this probably won't be considered as a new detail of the character's appearance. And there are two ways to edit the generated images. Both of them work in a similar way, and both have the same limitation. Here's the first one. Here's the prompt I used to generate this image. I can edit it, remove, or add some details. For example, I'll make her sit on the rock looking at the sky. I hit generate button, and there will be created two images. The background is almost identical, but now the girl is not so close to the camera, and she looks at the sky sitting on the rock. I edited this picture on the right, and I'll edit this one using the same prompt. So it should be edited in the same way. And here you can see that it changed point of view on this picture, but the rocks in the sky are the same. So it uses this particular generated image as a reference to create new variations with the changes I specified. And here's second editing option that is called Refine. It allows you to edit images with Nano Banana just like in Gemini. I'll try to make edits similar to the changes I made with the first image editing option. Nice result, but all the edited versions are side view shots. So this time, I'll make her look at the camera and this will be face close-up. Can you say that this face is similar to the image I uploaded in the subject section? Partially, yes, but this is some different person because this time, Nano Banana used side view portraits I generated. Okay, let's make a front view portrait from this image. I'll even try to use the same prompting trick I used in Gemini to refer to the image I uploaded. Precise reference option is enabled all the time. So we can see that the problem is the same and this prompting trick doesn't work here. So refine mode is good for editing whatever you want, but without changing head positioning or applying many edits to the same image because of the consistency degradation problem. 
first image editing option have exactly the same problem because WISC doesn't use the reference pictures you uploaded when creating edited versions of the generated image. And if I'll continue editing process, the face will get less and less similar to the reference. And finally, let's animate some images. Google provides two ways to do this for free. In WISC, you can animate the generated images if they have 16 by 9 aspect ratio. On the free account, you have five free generations per month. The generated videos have sound, so you can describe in your prompt what you want to hear too. This feels amazing. <laughs> Even if you don't specify that the person should say something, VO3 can add some speech randomly. Whisk obviously uses fast version of VO3. The quality of the video is not the highest possible, and all the generated sound effects and speech sound like they are slowed down a little. You can make the person say something, but don't forget that the length of the generated videos is around 8 seconds. And the voice sounds pretty similar in different generations, but you don't have full control over it. If you want to make your character speak, it's better to use some other tools. And Google just dropped VO 3.1, and you can try it in Google's Flow. In Flow, you have five free monthly generations too. These five generations are the same five generations you have in WISC. There are two models available, quality and fast. With quality model, you can generate only one video per month. It obviously requires much more computational power. I want to animate my character, so I'll use frames to video option. You can upload starting and ending frames, but you can also add starting frame only. You should crop your image to make it fit 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 aspect ratio. I'll specify in my prompt what she should do and say, and I want to see slow zoom in in the video. Don't forget to set right aspect ratio because it won't be automatically adjusted to match the aspect ratio of the uploaded images. The generation takes around five minutes if you use quality model, and currently it creates videos in 720p. Veo 3.11 is here. It made error in character speech, but the result is very sharp and detailed. And you can see the quality of lip sync. Nice. And let's make some video with ingredients to video option. It works kind of similar to Nano Banana. You can add up to three elements. I'll use image of this woman and the same orange glasses and white strapless dress. All the uploaded images should have album or portrait aspect ratio, so you'll probably need to add some blank space to some squared images, for example, before uploading them, so the items on the picture won't be cropped. Aspect ratio will be landscape this time, and I'll use fast version of VO 3.1. I specified that she should wear these items, and mentioned that the dress is strapless, so I hope that the straps that are visible on the reference image won't appear in the video. Okay, this time it added some background music to the video, and the dress isn't strapless. But you can see that movement is smooth and natural enough. Flow also has a video editing option. Click on this pencil and you'll be able to specify the location you want to change and describe it in the prompt area. And you can extend your video or add new scenes inside Scene Builder. So you should add the video to the scene and open Scene Builder. So here you can click on this plus button and select the way you want to extend already existing clip. And then you can create new clip using text, frames, or ingredients to video options. Flow provides much more options compared to image to video feature in WISC, but I think that fast version of VO 3.1 can be added to Google's WISC in near future.